Well, Hamilton, the giving season, it is upon us. So our, for our remaining shows leading up to the holidays, we will be highlighting an organization that gives back to the community. This week, we are kicking things off with Food for Kids. And to tell us more about it, it's the Executive Director, Kathy Hahn. Kathy, so nice to see you in studio today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, before we get into what Food for Kids is going to be doing over the holidays, a reminder to our viewers out there, what does ki uh, Food for Kids do throughout the whole year? So we respond to requests from schools, both the public school board and the Catholic school board, when a student is suffering from food insecurity. So as anyone at the school may notice, school staff may see that a child has some academic issues, maybe some behavior issues that are made better by having something to eat. Mm -hmm. They give us a call. And so we go through a little bit of a triage um, just to make sure that it's a student that should be in our program because we really feed the kids that are at a crisis level of food insecurity mm -hmm. and we register the student in our program and so what happens is every weekend um, before the weekend we will deliver a bag of food to the kids directly at their school so removing any barriers from accessing our program and in that bag of food is breakfast for Saturday and Sunday lunch for Saturday and Sunday plus four healthy snacks so those are the kids that would otherwise go home there's nothing in the cupboards, the fridge is bare, but now they've gone home and they have food to eat for the weekend. And the way your staff and the volunteers go about this, you give these children dignity. You, 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 you're not going in there with drums and horns and all that. It's very... Here, you're going to be looked after for another week. It is. With grace and humility and dignity, yeah. we deliver our program in the most non-stigmatizing approach. So we want to make sure that there is no embarrassment. We want to make sure there's no waiting in line. We want to make sure that the food is discreetly tucked in their backpack or they know where to pick it up from the school. And we work with the school because we want to make sure that the kids are fed. That's what's important to us, mm -hmm. that these kids don't go days without food because the kids in our program might go days without food if not for the bag of food that we send them. Yeah. You have been in this role now as the executive director for five years. Five years. Have you seen a drastic incline in the use of your services? Very much so and particularly this year is different for us. Mm -hmm. So this year we've noticed that the number of critical requests for our program are coming in at a pace that we've never seen before. So for example we may last year have had a family that was at risk of being in crisis and they were on our radar but this year things have become worse for them and they've now become part of our crisis category and nobody waits for our program if you are at that critical level of food insecurity you're in our program right away but we have seen that that number that families caregivers just can't make it work with the cost of food the cost of their rent we have more families going to shelter telling us that they're going to become homeless by the end of the month telling us that they need our program not that it would be nice to have our program, but they need our program in order to feed their kids. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's so important what you are doing and the stories you must hear and listen to, they must just be heartbreaking. They are, and they vary. So yeah. we've got kids that are in foster care. We've got kids that are um, multi-generational living in shelter here in our city. We have mom has cancer, dad isn't around, mom can't work, can't pay the bills. We have every story. We have 14-year-olds that are living couch to couch, so they don't have a permanent address. They see where they can sleep that night at their friends' houses. And that's why within our program, we make sure Sure that a lot of things are in place to make it easier for our kids to eat so everything that we pack in our bags is easy to open you don't need a can opener to to open the cans that we send home mm -hmm. it's good at room temperature I don't expect a 14 year old that's living couch to couch to have access to a stove oh. or a pot um, halal friendly nut free um, kid friendly everything that we can think of wow. that makes it easier for a kid to just open that bag of food and eat. And then on top of that, you have to make sure that it meets some dietary restrictions and that it's somewhat healthy too. Absolutely. It's not chocolate bars and chips going in there. It's not. And no. we want to make sure that they're actually eating it. So several times of the year, we do feedback surveys with our schools mm -hmm. and with our caregivers to make sure 
do you like the food that we're packing? Yeah. Um, what do you prefer? What do you least like? What do you most like? Because there's no point in sending a 17-year-old food that he's not going to eat. I want to make sure that you're going to eat. And so we really listen as well. Tell us what you like about our program, and we really revise it to make sure that we're meeting the needs of everyone. You're, you're listening, and we that's are. so important nowadays. Um, we are going into the holidays where the kids are going to be out of school for a couple weeks. Kathy, what does Food for Kids do for those kids during that time? So every December, we gratefully accept donations to help us purchase a grocery card for every student in our program. So mm -hmm. we have 1,700 kids that are currently in our program. We operate within 84 schools in the city, and we want to send every student home in our program with a grocery card mm -hmm. to help sustain them over that holiday break from school. So our last bag that's going to be delivered to the schools prior to the school break will include all of the food that we normally pack, but it will also include a grocery card. So the kids in our program can go to their grocery store and purchase what they need for that period of time that they won't have access to our program, that we won't be able to go to the schools because they're closed, and they won't have access to the student nutrition programs either. Extremely important. Um, and of course, the work that you're doing, it requires volunteers um, to deliver the foods, but it also takes a lot of volunteers to help pack the foods and you've done a great uh, service by offering corporations the opportunity to come on in and see what your world is all about. Oh, we love when people come to yes. our warehouse to pack with us. So we're a very small team. There's only three of us that operate a program year round for yeah. 1,700 kids, but we work with about 50 volunteers a year, or excuse me, a week. And so that includes volunteers that help us unpack the skids of food that we get delivered. That's one day of the week. Then we have the volunteers that help us pack. Then we have a whole new set of driving volunteers that come and help us disperse out to those 84 schools to get those back bags discreetly delivered into the hands of the kids in our program. Mm -hmm. So we rely on our volunteers. We, we s simply couldn't operate. And if you are a corporation, that, like this is some great team building. Uh, it, it's great to bring the staff together where you don't have to worry about spending hundreds of thousands of dollars for a, a party or something. Go out to Food for Kids, bring the team together. And then you also get a sense of how important this is. Most people that come, you're exactly right, most people that come to volunteer with us say, I had no idea. Yeah. Do you do this every week? Every week. Um, because of the, the magnitude of the program. Mm -hmm. They really get to spend that time with us. We like to have fun. We have music going. We yep. make it a fun time. But they really do experience a hands-on. Sometimes when you volunteer or give to an organization, you don't really know where is that effort going? Where's mm -hmm. the financial you know, contribution going? And with us, you can see that it is tables and tables of food that you are packing in a bag and the next person that opens that bag of food is going to be a kid yeah. that is going to consume it and that's the difference so we welcome corporations and individuals we have a whole volunteer page on our website yeah. foodforkidshamilton.ca where you can sign up for volunteer opportunities but we we just we love to introduce our program to our community and i think it's important and it does it strictly do, it really does hit home uh finally before we have to head out here for individuals uh, that want to make a financial donation to Food for Kids, what is the best way to get in touch with you, fine folks? Head over to our website, and that'll give you the links to our social media as well, which is really the best place to find current information about what we're doing, but mm -hmm. foodforkidshamilton.ca, our donation page is there, volunteer page, our social media, anything that we're doing that's made the news, so, and lots of information about our program as well. There's lots of information on that great website, and of course, all the work that you have been doing, uh, Kathy. Thank you so much. Thank you. For, for not just your time today, but for what you have done uh, in this city for the last five years and continue to do by helping those in need. We really, really you. appreciate your time. It's all about giving back. Um, Hamilton, thank you for joining us. And make sure you tune in next week as we speak with more of the movers and shakers that make Hamilton such a vibrant and engaged community. Hamilton, take care. Look after yourselves.